could say our lecture for this afternoon would be on bioethics. So what is bioethics? Bioethics is an interdisciplinary field that examines the moral dimensions of decision making in healthcare and the life sciences. It is the critical examination of decision making in health related contexts and in contexts involving the biological sciences. This is by Samuel Gorovitz, a professor of philosophy. By definition, it is a subset of ethics that provides reasoned and defensible solutions that incorporate ethical principles for actual or anticipated moral dilemma facing clinicians in medicine and biology. It deals with relationships between practitioners and patients, practitioners and society, and society and patients. We have four basic bioethical principles in healthcare. This is by Bochamp and Childress in 2008. It is beneficence, non-maleficence, respect for autonomy, and justice. Knowing these four basic bioethical principles is what we would focus on on this lecture. First of all, the principle of beneficence. It is the physician's obligation to give highest priority to his patients, welfare, and provide competent health care that maximizes health benefits for the patient. According to Bochamp and Childress, the principle of beneficence supports a number of more specific rules, including the following. To protect and defend the rights of others. To prevent harm from occurring to others. Remove conditions that will cause harm to others help persons with disabilities, and rescue persons in danger. For example, when the patient is incapacitated by the grave nature of accident or illness, we presume that the reasonable person would want to be treated aggressively and we rush to provide beneficent intervention by stemming the bleeding, mending the broken, or suturing the wounded. In the treatment of suicidal patients who are a clear and present danger to themselves, physicians should intervene on behalf of saving the patient's life or placing the patient in a protective environment in the belief that the patient is compromised and cannot act in his best interest at the moment. A patient who comes to the emergency room bleeding profusely from a gunshot wound, lost consciousness due to massive blood loss with no other relatives seen accompanying the patient. And a man came coming to the emergency room at 2 a.m. needing emergency treatment from a hacking wound to the face and head and massive bleeding. You learn that this patient is the same suspect who killed a close relative a few days ago. So what will you do? Using the principle of beneficence, you are obliged, or it is your duty as a doctor, to treat the patient regardless of situation. But of course, it would all still be in contrast with other principles of bioethics. The next principle would be non-maleficence. This is first of all, do no harm. It requires the physician to prevent or minimize harm to patients in the course of physician-patient interaction. The physician recommends treatment options which poses minimal or no harm to his patients. This is the Hippocratic imperative to physicians bring benefit and do no harm. So example, doing a sensitivity test prior to IV drug administration and prescribing oral antibiotics for which the patient has no known allergy to. 
or referring the patient to a specialist who can adequately manage his case instead of managing him on your own, and a severely diabetic patient with an infected necrotic leg which you advise to undergo amputation. So, principles of non-maleficence, according to Mochamp and Shilgis, the principle of non-maleficence supports a number of more specific moral rules, including the following. Do not kill. Do not cause pain or suffering. Do not incapacitate. Do not cause offense. Do not deprive others of the goods of life. Our third principle would be respect for autonomy. This requires the physician to respect the rights of patients, to make independent decisions as an expression of their self-determination. Basis for this practice of informed consent in the physician-patient transaction regarding health care. According to Bochamp and Childress, the principle of respect for autonomy supports a number of more specific rules including the following. Tell the truth. Respect for the privacy of others. Protect confidential information. Obtain consent for interventions with patients. And when asked, help others make important decisions. Examples of which for informed consent would be terminal patients with painful gastrointestinal obstruction due to stage 4 cancer, choosing to forgo chemotherapy or cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or a poor family decides to forgo life-sustaining treatment, informing patient about prognosis and disclosing all details of treatment, or a VIP patient requests that his case do not be divulged to media or his relatives. And our fourth principle would be the principle of justice. So justice in healthcare is usually defined as a form of fairness or as Aristotle once said, giving to each that which is his due. The question of distributive justice also seems to hinge on the fact that some goods and services are in short supply. There is not enough to go around, thus some fair means of allocating scarce resources must be determined. Examples, it underlies concerns about how social benefits and burdens should be distributed. For example, is it fair that two patients, otherwise similarly situated, would be treated disparately by the healthcare system because one is rich and the other is indigent? For example, who would get access to coronavirus screening or the rapid test or RT-PCR? And it is subdivided into three categories. It's distributive justice, it's fair distribution of scarce resources, such as rapid testing of coronavirus, rights-based justice, or respect for people's rights altogether, or legal justice, respect for morally acceptable laws. So it's equal to access to treatment or some dilemma. So, some reproductive technologies would not be equally available to all. So, for example, given the choice who would get a priority in organ transplant, first come, first serve, or case to case, who has the most chance to live, or who could afford treatment? Should you recruit poor patients for your research because they badly need the monetary compensation. So these are issues of justice in the healthcare system. So there are other bioethical principles as well that we would just pass through. So it's the principle of human dignity. So it requires that all healthcare decisions must aim to promote human dignity and result not only in physical health, 
but also satisfy the patient's psychological, social, spiritual, and cultural needs as an individual and as member of the community he belongs. So patient has the right to choose or refuse treatment depending on his preference, culture, or religion. Free and informed consent, this is also derived from the basic principle of autonomy. This is the concrete expression of respecting autonomy and elements of a valid informed consent would be the competence of patient, adequate information to make an informed decision, comprehension and understanding of information presented, and it should be voluntary. The information should be included in recommending a diagnostic and therapeutic procedure for a patient. Complete description, reason for the procedure, risk and benefits, if there are alternative options, and the patient has freedom to ask questions. In cases of incompetency who cannot provide consent, proxy decision makers should make the decision according to the patient's best interest. For emergency situations, the attending physician can invoke therapeutic privilege and give consent based on his obligation to provide health care. For example, a ruptured ectopic pregnancy in shock with no available relatives. Principle of a well-formed conscience requires that physicians as responsible health care providers have the following obligations. Inform themselves as fully as possible about evidence-based medical facts and ethical norms. Form a morally certain judgment of conscience based on above information. Make health care decisions according to this fully informed conscience and accept responsibility for their actions. Principle of totality requires that all persons should develop, use, care for, and preserve all his physical functions in such a way that lower functions are never sacrificed except for the better functioning of the whole person or to preserve life. For example, an atonic uterus causing heavy postpartum bleeding may be removed to preserve life of the patient. A gangrenous foot may be amputated to prevent spread of infection. And principle of professional communication requires that health professionals have the following responsibilities. Establish and preserve trust in their patients share medical facts they possess that are legitimately needed by patients to have an informed conscience, refrain from lying or providing misinformation, and keep secret information not legitimately needed by others that if revealed will harm patients or destroy patients' trust. Confidentiality requires the physician to keep the privacy of patients about those aspects of life which do not directly affect others. It is not absolute, may be broken by the need to protect the patient or others from harm. The principle of double effect is derived from the basic principle of non-maleficence. It refers to actions which may have both good and bad effects, and four conditions must be fulfilled for the principle to be allowed are the following. The action must not be intrinsically contradictory to one's fundamental commitment and neighbor the action must be good or at least indifferent. The intention of the agent must be directed towards the beneficial effect. The harmful effect is only allowed, never directly intended. Foreseen beneficial effects must be greater than or equal to the harmful effects, and the beneficial effect must proceed from the action ahead of simultaneous with the harmful effect. For example, a breast cancer patient who is pregnant is given chemotherapy, or a cervical patient cancer 
pregnant for 28 weeks under CS and hysterectomy thereafter. Stewardship refers to a man's limited dominion over nature and his own life. These things were entrusted to him to care for and improve as responsible steward. Health professionals have ethical responsibilities to use intelligence and available technology to prevent and cure diseases. So in summary, these are the four basic principles, beneficence, non-maleficence, autonomy, and justice with your other bioethical principles derived from these four basic principles. Thank you for listening to this PMCH lecture. Subscribe to our PMCH channel for further lectures on preventive medicine.